Hi again friends, thanks for joining me for a new Alan Holdsworth lesson video. Today we're going to do Shallow Sea, which uh, is not really that tricky of a song. There's not a lot of weird stretchy chords in it, but there are a lot of chords. It's basically, the entire brunt of the song is on Alan, because the entire intro takes up like half the song. But the good news is, if you really get that intro down, the rest of the song is going to be very simple, because it's just slight variations of what the intro is doing. So, because there are so many different sections, I'm going to break up the intro section by part, and then when, th when those parts come back, I'll reference them and tell you how they're a little bit different here and there. Also, we have the benefit of Alan's solo chart, so I'll be able to use that and sort of show you how he's interpreting some of these chords as. Uh, it could be a little bit tricky, so I'm going to use the whiteboard for this. Uh, also, trying to play along with this song is going to be really tough because both the intro section and then when the band starts out are in slightly different tunings. I think it's a mastering thing. The solo section, uh, the intro is like a quarter step sharp and I think the full band thing is like almost a full half step. It's really strange. I think it was a mastering issue. So playing along with it is going to be strange. Uh, anyway, let's get on with it. Let's do Shallow Sea. So for this full intro section, Alan's using his uh, swell sound, all that delay with the volume pedal. In tours, I think from like 82 to 84, he played, when he played the song, played the full swell intro like on the record, but then subsequently stopped playing the intro with the swell. Uh, he ended up also, for whatever reason, removing what this part would be, the A section, and then starting from what I would consider the B section. And uh, he always just sort of ran through it, which I never liked, because I think the chords sound really beautiful. He just played them out, sort of like what he would do in his zone sections, instead of just like getting on with it and, and you know speeding through it. So, there are a couple of chords here that uh, I'm not entirely sure how Alan's playing them, because there's no video of it but I'll give you some ideas of what I think is going on and also um, different ways if you want to be able to, to play it. So it starts off with this E major, but now we're adding the major 7 here. And then that goes to C major 7. And we've seen this voicing before. Alan actually likes to use this major 7 voicing a lot. So e major 7, C major 7. And then it's just this two chord phrase again. It goes down to D major 7 to A major 7. But now what happens is the C sharp on the record goes to D. I think he's just moving his pinky up from C sharp to D like this. But because of the swell sound, it's really hard to tell. Maybe he's even tapping the note. It's hard to hear. But I think he's actually just uh, moving his pinky up to D. Now that part gets modulated up a half step, so now we have F major 7 to C sharp major 7 to uh, D sharp major 7 or E flat. Now we come to the chord that I had the most trouble with in this entire song. Uh, the notes are certainly D, um, D, G, E flat, and B flat. This is really um, an E flat major 7. But how is Alan actually playing this? Because the top note goes from B flat to A. So I came to the conclusion by trying to listen to as many live versions as I can uh, that it's voiced like this. And then Alan takes the B flat with his pinky and then moves it down a half step. Like that. I think this makes the most sense because um, of all the subsequent chords that are going to come after it are using the same groups of strings. But, I mean, is he playing it like this, and then playing the A from his first finger like that? Is he playing this and then tapping the A? Or is he even playing it on those groups of strings? Maybe he's playing it like this, um, or doing the same thing where he's barring, and then playing the uh, A with his first finger on the 10th fret. There's all these different ways of playing it. Or even, you, if you don't want to even stretch this, you can play the chord as his his other favorite voicing for major 7 like this and then just play the A like that but usually there's some sort of uh, string grouping logic in there where even if the voicing itself doesn't make sense the string grouping makes sense and that's why I think it's like this but then 
the next chord is this D minor add nine, which we've seen in like uh, a merry-go-round. And now that F goes to E, it goes to the two. Now, why I say that I think it's doing this because it doesn't sound open, it doesn't sound like the open E. So that makes me think, oh, he's probably doing. And then the chord after that is B minor add nine. And then we get this voicing, which is really strange. And this is sort of like the catalyst for what the solo section is going to be, or the, the, the upcoming D section. Uh, if you think of this chord uh, as a sus4 instead of, let's say, a D sus2, which I'm going to eventually, if we keep this same voicing that we have the five, one, four, and then the uh, the five again, so we have actually two uh, E's in here. If I move my pinky up a half step to, 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 uh, to D sharp, now we have a sharp four. So this is where we come up with that weird chord, that D, uh, actually in this case, A sharp sus four. A sus sharp four, I should say. Uh, and that's why this is not even like really a real name for a chord, but this chord is going to be uh, used pretty frequently later. So I'm going to have to call it a sus sharp 4 because there's, in my opinion, no other way of really calling it. So over here it's a G sus, uh, G sus sharp 4. That's the whole A section, and then we go to the B section. Alright, so this would be the B section. Uh, as I just said, this is where Alan, in later performances, would actually start the piece without the swell sound. He would just uh, play it straight out, solo guitar. Um, some interesting voicings in here, some uh, also simple chords where the idea of them is actually relatively simple instead of getting a really weird voiced chord that has a simple name. These are all, I think, relatively uh, simple in structure. Starts off with a C major 13. If you want to think of the root as A, for whatever reason, you can think of this as like a, a, a voicing for an A minor, uh, add 9, add 11, because we have an A, a C, and an E, then we have our 11 and a 9, but I think it works better as a C major 13, and then that moves down to B flat major 13. Now even though Alan moves his whole hand down, the whole voicing down like this, not playing the A or the major 7 here, but because it's being rung out, play here, it does bleed through a little bit. But I mean, it sounds fine if you want to add it. Uh, it doesn't really, it's not going to change the quality of the chord. But he's, because remember, he's actually playing with four fingers. He's got the pick tucked into his first finger. So after playing like this, his hand is just dropping down to these top three strings and his thumb is playing the bass note. So anyway, B major 13, B flat major 13, 2, this chord, and if uh, any of you are Led Zeppelin fans, you notice that this is also in Stairway to Heaven. Let's see if that video gets taken down because of that. But we have a C augmented triad with a B on top. It's built from the C major 7. You can also think of it as an A minor major 9, if you want to consider A your root. But, uh, I think in this case it works better as a uh, C major 7 sharp 5. Uh, then the next chord is an F major triad with a uh, B in the bass. This is an, uh, we've seen this chord before in House of Mirrors and also in uh, Texas. It's an F major add sharp 11. And then that moves all the way up to this um, C minor uh, major 7. Once again, it's built from this C major 7 type uh, voicing, but now we're flattening the E to E flat. Now we have a minor major 7. Uh, so that whole section sounds like this so far. Then it moves to this chord. Now this is kind of unusual because we have two B flats in this chord. 
with a B flat, an A, a B flat, and a D. Uh, this song, more than any other Allen song, has a lot of four note chords where, where two notes are the same. That's very unusual for him. Uh, so I would consider this a B flat major seven in this case. You can maybe think of it as like a, a, a first inverse in G minor add nine or something, or even some sort of B flat thirteen. Uh, but uh, well, I mean you can't really put because you need this in there. Uh, but I think B flat major seven is the best name for it. And then we move to this weird chord. Oops. Now we have here a G, a B flat, and an F which is a G minor 7, and then we have an A in the bass. So this is like a G, main, uh, G minor 9 with a 9 in the bass. If you want to consider A your root, you're going to have a, a sort of a difficult time naming this because you have a flat 7 and a flat 9, and then a, a flat 6 or a, a sharp 5. But uh, I think the best way to call it is just a G minor 9. Then we use that same voicing as before. Now we have an A flat major 13. And then this G dominant, G7, but now we're adding in the 11, so this is more like a G11 chord. This chord is very similar to what's in the things you see. It's not exactly the same uh, in the things you see. You have a D in there, but it functions the same way. So that's the whole B section. to the C section, which is kind of, kind of starts off the same way as this section. The C section uses the same sort of voicing as that C major 13, but now instead of the bass being a C, it's now an A. So now this is more like an A sus4 and 9. And then this voicing gets moved down to G, to G, add 9 sus4, but now that A is still ringing out, but Alan's not playing it with his thumb, his, uh, his four fingers are actually playing just the top four strings of D, G, B, and E string. Then that moves to a B flat minor major 7, and then G minor major 7. But now with that minor third, you move that to the the two. So then this becomes like a uh, the uh, a major seven sus two. So that flat three goes to the the two. Then we start playing those uh, major thirteen voicings. But now we're going to go from D to C. So we are playing D major thirteen, to C major thirteen. Same concept where you're uh, on the C major thirteen. You're not playing the uh, B in there. Then we have this B major, try it with the add flat 13, and then you add the flat 9 on the top. Real kind of uh, strange chord here, or if you can think of it uh, as a, we have a C minor with the major 7, and then the sharp 11, so this could be like a C, um, C minor major 7, sharp 11. Two different ways you can call this chord. Then E major with the flat 9. We have an E major here, and then we have the F on the top. And that flat 9 goes to the E. Like that. And then it goes to, um, I guess it would be like a, um, a G sus4. But then you're adding in the E on the top. We have a, a G, a C, an F, and then another C. So once again, it's another unusual instance where we're playing two of the same notes. But then you're adding in the E on the top. So uh, maybe it's best to call C the root here. So this would be like a C major, but then you're adding in the 11. And then that kind of makes sense for the next chord because then we play this, which is really strange, but we have a D, uh, an F sharp, uh, a C sharp, so we have like a D major 7, and then instead of A, the major, uh, the, the perfect fifth, we have the flat 5 or the sharp 4. So this is like a D major 7 sharp, uh, sharp 11. And then that whole thing gets moved down to F, or 
I mean, depending on what you, well, let's do F. Um, F major at 11, G major 7 sharp 11, and then this uh, G major 7, a uh, weird sort of version of it. We have a G, D, an F sharp, and a B. Uh, I also want to thank my friend Renee for pointing this out because I actually had the chord a little wrong here, and it turns out because I was hearing, it's what makes learning, uh, trying to figure out some of the swell stuff, Difficult is that the delay lasts for so long sometimes a note will bleed into the next chord and you hear it in there But it's really not uh, so I had the C sharp in here, but it's actually a B and that C sharp I was hearing uh, was from The C sharp in there So this is what that whole section sounds like Sometimes use his first, first finger to reach for the G and play that, or even tap it like that. Uh, it's on the record, but it's very uh, difficult to hear. It's easier to see it on live performances. Uh, then after this, we get to the really the final section, the D section. So this D section is really what a majority of the solo section is built around. Uh, it's almost identical, but there are two uh, little parts where that are, that are removed in the solo section, and it only happens in the intro section. So it's all these different sus four or sus sharp four chords being moved around. It first starts off in uh, G sharp, then it moves up a whole step to A sharp, and then it moves down to uh, A. So. Uh, I think of them as those three larger cells. It starts off uh, G sharp, sus4, and then A with the, uh, the sus sharp4, C sharp sus4, B sus4, the first two chords again, G sharp sus4 to A uh, sus sharp4, and then F sharp sus4. And then you move the 4 to the sharp 4, such so sharp 4. And then we get this little tag at the end that's not in the solo section. We have a D major, uh, D major 7 sharp 5. Um, yeah. And then we get this unusual chord. And I call it unusual because we have two C sharps here. We have a G sharp, a C sharp, and a B and then another C-sharp, so I think the best way to really call this chord is maybe like a G-sharp minor 11, because uh, we have a G-sharp, we have the minor 3rd, and then we have the 4, I guess. Uh, and then from there, we take the first part that we had just played, and then that gets modulated up a whole step. So now, after the these two chords, whoops, now we go to A-sharp sus4, to B sus sharp 4, D sharp sus 4, C sharp sus 4. Uh, there are also parts in this where instead of playing the sus 4 like this, you can also use your first finger and bar and try to play the uh, C sharp on the top, or you can just abandon it and just play it like this, which Alan does actually pretty frequently, especially when the part gets kind of fast. Something like this. So those first two chords again, the A sharp sus4, so the B sus sharp4, and then G sharp sus4, same idea, but now we're playing the G uh, sus sharp4. Then we play those ma that uh, major 7 sharp5 chord again, but it's not in the same uh, relationship as it was before, because now we're playing it as an A major 7 sharp5, and then it goes to weird E flat minor 11 sort of chord. Then, as I said, that whole sus4 part gets moved down to uh, A, or half step down. So now it's the same concept. A sus4, B flat sus sharp4. D sus4, C sus4, A sus4, 
B flat sus sharp four, G sus four, G sus sharp four. Uh, then that part goes into that's that's it. If you got all all those sections, everything just repeats, but in a slightly different way. So from here, it goes back to the B section. So once again, B section. chord is the beginning of the C section and now this on the record is where the that swell sound stops then Alan actually just plays it uh, straight forward with the band and the full band enters um, so it's the C section but now just played without the swell it's kind of fast and then it plays uh, the D section. Now from this, this D section and then the next section, I would actually consider the solo section because uh, Alan plays it and then eventually improvises over and it's the same exact uh, order as the solo section. So I'll just go over the solo section now. This is the solo section. Uh, this is the section I'll be going over later with Alan's chart to sort of see how he's interpreting some of these sus4 and sus sharp4 chords. Uh, it's basically the D section, just without the major 7 sharp5 and minor 11 chords, and it's the major 7 part of the A section. Uh, so, like I said, if you got those parts down, it's actually easier because you're removing some chords. At this point, it really has a, a, a three feel. I guess it's because shallow C, you're on a boat, that kind of thing. So uh, it starts off the same way as the, as the D section with the G sharp sus4. That modulates up a whole step. You also do that little slide thing. Modulates now up a half step. to the A section. Now what's interesting there is that Alan doesn't play the major 7 part like that. He plays the D major triad and then straight to A major 7. Modulates up just like the A section, F major 7. Here, that is not in 3, that one measure. It's E flat major 7 for uh, E flat for 2 beats and then the major 7 for 2 beats. And then back to and that's it. That's what the entire solo section is. It's just those two parts back to back. Uh, so I'll go over the analysis of that later in the video. But now I'm going to talk about after the solo, uh, all the parts when they come back and how they're a little bit different. So after Alan's done soloing, he'll just start playing the chords again for the solo section. Uh, I'll start from the, the end of the D section. Then from here, Alan then diverts to the end section where he starts to play the end sort of of the of the A section and using the the, the swell sound. So it does the B minor and 9 chord and then goes to the G sus sharp 4 chord like that. So now this part is a variation of the B section. So now instead of the beginning of the B section where we had C to B flat, those first two chords are now down a half step for whatever reason. So now it's a B major 13 to A major 13. Once again, the same thing where that second chord you're actually not playing the, uh, the major 7. But then it starts the same way here with the C major 7 sharp 5, the F add sharp 11. But now here, at least on the record, Alan doesn't play the minor 3rd, he just plays the G major 7 like this. 
uh, back to the B flat major seven. Here's a little twist now. Instead of playing the F on the top, we're now playing an E. So I guess this is more like a, uh, a G minor six over nine, because then we have a G uh, of the minor third, six, and then the nine in the bass. Then it goes back to the, then it continues the same way to uh, A flat major thirteen to G eleven. section. Then once again the full band enters, but there's a variation here as well. Same thing. Now after this G minor major 7 part, instead of going to D major 13 to C major 13, that gets transposed up a half step. Once again, I don't know why. It just does. It loves this stuff. E flat major 13 to D flat major 13, and then back to the B major with the add flat 13. So something like this. comes this lick which is really tricky. Now Alan's actually using, uh, remember he's got the pick in his, in his first finger but he actually uses the pick here to play the lowest note and then his other two fingers to grab because the, the lick itself is very strange. You're playing a B flat to B, so six to seven, and then with your first finger you're going um, C sharp and uh, C sharp F sharp like this and then that pattern, that hand pattern gets moved down up in flat fives, kind of like, I guess this is what Alan sort of got from the uh, Slominski books, it does things a lot in uh, flat five intervals, but it goes from, let's think of it starting from the sixth fret, sixth fret on E, and then seventh fret on A, and then uh, eighth fret on D, and then um, ninth fret on G, but now instead of ending on B, we end on C then a B comes after. Whoops. And then it's sort of the uh, end section again where you play the F major with the add 11, G major 7 sharp 11 just like before. And then instead of going to G major 7 down here, you play the voicing up here. Once again, Alan's sort of favorite voicing. And then the same one as the if you want to play it like that, but it's totally played like this. But this lick is so tricky for me. Uh, it's so against my, like, the, how I think of things, but that's really the whole song. So as I said, if you really got that intro section, the rest is really easy because it's just slight variations of what uh, Alan was doing for the intro. So now with that said, I'm going to start going through his chart and so showing you how Alan's interpreting the solo section. Before I forget, I want to show you how the intro sounds like in context.
and maybe I'll do the uh, ending section too really quickly. On to the solo section. All right, we got a lot to unpack here, so hopefully, uh, with all of this detail here, you'll be able to follow Alan's chart, or at least be able to understand it a bit better. Because you know, writing this out makes me feel like I'm doing calculus again in college, but uh, it's actually easier than it looks. Of course, it looks very overwhelming right now, but. Uh, if you follow me, it won't be too bad. So this is what Alan's chart actually looks like. So we have the three rows, and that's the D section that I was talking about with all these sus4 and sus sharp4 chords. Now with that section, it modulates. It starts from the first part, and then it goes up a whole step, and then down a half step, which is exactly what those three uh, rows do. I believe the first scale that's on there is F sharp X and then it goes to G sharp X and then it goes to G X. And if you've watched any of my previous videos where I analyze Alan's charts or at least the, the big one um, where I talked about what all of this stuff in here means, uh, you'll know that what some of these symbols actually stand for. So we know X is Dorian to Alan. So with all of these weird symbols, I'm going to just uh, brush right through them assuming that you know them. If you want to go into more detail to see what these actually mean, uh, I have a separate video that I'll link in the description so you can understand it a bit better. But I can summarize it very quickly. You just have to trust me. So we have, this is what Alan's chart looks like. I'm using the third row because it's the easiest to see because we have all, uh, we have a, a scale that's very easy. It's basically F major with an added flat six or G Doring. So these are the chords to the last modulated part of that D section. And I wrote them out just to make life easier and I didn't screw it up too badly. A sus4, B flat sus sharp4, D sus4, C sus4, the first two chords again, G sus4, and then G sus sharp4. And I wrote the notes next to it here, E, A, D, F, B flat, E. Once again, the note here is what I considered the root. A, D, G, G, C, F, D, G, C, and then D, G, C sharp, because that four goes to the sharp four here. And this is the row that th this part belongs to. So the first thing that we see here is G, X, or F, uh, gamma, I guess, but, but I think people have said, and I hope I got that right. Uh, so we know from Alan's charts and many of my videos that G, X means G Dorian, and F, that gamma means F major with an added flat six. So we know that G Dorian, or Dorian is the second degree of F major. We're just adding an extra note here. So let's just take the notes from F major with the added flat six here, or what Barry Harris called the, um, the diminished six scale. So we have F, G, A, B flat, C, one, two, three, four, five. We need the flat six, which would be D flat. I'm just gonna call it C sharp. Uh, D and then E. Okay? So if we look at our chart here and we have all these notes available E A D, E A D, right there, F B flat E, F B flat E, A D G, A D G, G C F, G C F, uh, D G C, D G C, and then finally D G and C sharp. So actually, this scale will work for that entire section if you want to treat it as just one scale. So basically that three, that whole section you can think of as, um, let's see if I can do this in my head, E major with an added flat six, then goes to F sharp major with the added flat six, and then F major with the added flat six. But now we have these symbols here next to that. I believe these are also alternate scales that you can use. Now, if you looked at that chart that I have, I'll post it here actually. I 
did a whole video on this and basically what these are are alternate scales that you can use and they're all they all these these scales Alan's just missing this which is right from there so we have the major with the added flat six all of these scales this is a eight note scale one two three four five six seven eight these are seven note scales that all contain the same notes here but all in a slightly different way X with the sh with the sharp four that's Dorian sharp four X uh, D X with the circle that's melodic minor with the flat six melodic minor with the flat six is harmonic minor and these two scales are actually uh, the same they're just different modes of each other and I would just think it'd just be easier to think of it as um, harmonic minor instead of Dorian with the sharp four and then B flat X with the circle that's melodic minor uh, with the sharp four melodic minor sharp four is the same thing as uh, Lydian minor or some people call it Lydian I think diminished uh, I think Lydian minor works better for me but these are all the same contain the same notes as this they're just in a slightly different order now we have here another alternate set of scales underneath that I think once again these are also alternate choices that you can use as I had just said these extra scales are seven note scale uh, I guess uh, versions or not really versions but uh, permutations of this this is the most important one because con this contains all the notes that this has so I'm just going to remove all of these and it's C with an added flat six C D E F G G sharp A B that's our eight note scale I don't think this scale works as well because it works for most of it except for this B flat sus sharp four and B flat sus sharp four over here but it fits everything else uh, because it just doesn't have a it needs a B flat and it doesn't have it but this has the B flat in it so this works better but you can blend these two so if you're in here I think this is mostly for like this section here you can use that scale but then once it gets to here it even works here but now we have this the the uh, sus sharp four with the C sharp this will work with that because this is E Dorian which is the second degree of D major so uh, I'll, I'll do it um, you know what? I'll do it in E I'll write out E Dorian E F sharp G A B C sharp D so that would fit this scale and also we have D X the circle that's melodic minor so D melodic minor is D E F G A B C sharp so once again also contains the same notes in here D G C sharp D G C sharp the only difference is one has an F sharp and one has an F natural that's why it's always interesting to see Alice charts by seeing what uh, choices that he has but if you want you can play F and flat six over that whole thing over that whole one section that makes sense so it's really modulating uh, between three scales it would start the third one well, let me just erase all this stuff I'll erase this so we talked about that modulation we have one two three we just talked about that third one as being this and that comes down from a half step here and that's modulated up from a whole step here so that first repeat you can think of this second repeat F sharp add flat six and then the third one is F with the added flat six then we have this little part in the bottom that's really easy I can probably uh, get rid of all this stuff now because we know that's part of the A section is the very tail of the solo uh, repeat is the beginning of the A section and we have E major 7 to C major 7 to D major because he doesn't play the D major 7 although that fits and then A major 7 then it modulates to F major 7 to C sharp major 7 and then E flat major 7 and if we look at the scales what did Alan what did, what did he write E major C major or D Dorian I guess it's just to help to blend the D uh, Dorian going to D major A major then the modulation here F major 
to C sharp major or to uh, E flat, I think you wrote E flat Dorian going to E flat major. So you can see he's treating all these as Ionian. E Ionian or just regular E major, not Lydian, which is interesting because usually you would think Lydian because that has a nicer sound over it. The only thing I can that, that I don't understand at the very end of the page, it looks like Alan wrote A, uh, A sharp minor going to E at the top, something like that. I think that just has to do with going out of the section. Uh, but I know E uh, over here, I guess would be like the starting point again if you want to go back to here. Maybe that has something to do with it. But that's what that whole solo section looks like. So it's actually simple, except for this part, because the changes go by really fast here. Three beats, three beats, three beats, uh, I think six beats technically, three beats, three beats, four beats, and then you're back in this large section, which is uh, pretty free with the improvisation. And even if you analyze his solo, it's really tough to hear what he's doing. So I think this is one of his more popular songs to play because you have so much freedom uh, in here, and the scale's relatively simple. E major. The flat six, of course, makes it a little bit weird, but you can just think of it as E major going to F major going to uh, F sharp major going to F major. So that's Alan's chart. Once again, lo looks like it's much more complicated than it really is, but I think it's basically just this. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it, learned something, and uh, I'll see you guys soon.